Hey everyone, my name is Shreya and I'm with USC's Young Scientist program. I'm standing in the shower right now to test out if my new raincoat is actually waterproof. So let's try it. Looks like I'm completely dry. Guess it's a good raincoat. Come with me and we'll learn more about other materials and their properties. The word material is not very specific, but it just means what is used to make another object. For example, the material that this pencil is made out of is wood, the material that this bowl is made out of is plastic, and the materials that these tires are made out of are rubber and metal. We can describe materials in many different ways. For example, we can describe a material as flexible or very bendy, strong, soft, waterproof, or rough. We can also use the opposite of these words like brittle, which means it breaks easily, weak, hard, absorbent, meaning it soaks up water, or smooth. Why do we need different materials that have all these different properties or ways we describe them? Well, think about this. When you lay down at night, you don't want your pillow to be hard and rough. You want it to be soft and smooth. But your bed, if that was soft and weak instead of hard and strong, then it would just collapse or it wouldn't support you and hold you up. Just like this, there are so many objects and items that you see throughout your day that have specific properties and they were made that way to have a specific use. Now it's time for our experiment where we can test out different materials and see if they work for the problem that we have, that we want to solve. So what we're trying to do is take this bear, cover it with some material so that it doesn't get wet when I put it in the bowl of water. I'm starting with plastic wrap and I'm going to do a couple layers of plastic wrap and then dunk it in the water and when we take it out I'll unwrap it and we'll see if the bear or whatever toy you choose, it can be whatever you want, is wet. So now I'm taking it out and unwrapping it and the outside of the plastic is wet but the bear inside is dry. There's no water on it. So now we'll try our next material, which is paper, just regular paper. And I'm covering up the bear, doing a couple layers again. And I'm going to stick it in the water. And when I take it out, the paper is all soaking wet and the bear is pretty wet too. You can see water all over it. Now on the side, I'm just drying the bear off with a paper towel. And then I'll try my next material, which is going to be aluminum foil. And I'm going to wrap the bear in that. And you can see that it tears a little bit. But I'm going to do another layer and then stick that in the water. And when I take it out and unwrap it, you can see that the bear is mostly dry. There's a little bit of water on it, but not that much. And now I'm drying off that little bit of water. And the last material I have is cloth. I'm just using an old t-shirt and I'm wrapping up the bear in that and sticking the whole t-shirt into this water. And when I take it out, that bear has some water all over it. So our goal was to keep the toy bear dry, and we saw that the plastic wrap did the best job of keeping it dry, and the paper and the t-shirt did not do a very good job of keeping it dry. So. We wanted a material like the plastic wrap, which we could describe as being waterproof, we could describe it as being flexible, and we could describe it as being pretty strong because it didn't rip as easily as the aluminum foil. 
In a different situation, maybe to clean up water, you would want something like a t-shirt or a towel to soak that water up, but that wouldn't keep it very dry. This week's scientist is Dr. Katherine J. Murphy. Dr. Murphy is a chemistry professor and researcher at the University of Illinois. Her goal is to actually create new materials that can be used in biology and energy-related applications. I'm sure she spends a lot of time thinking about the properties of these materials, just like we did. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.